Hi, this is Jan Hibbert from Cabin Leather for another session of my Maker Monday series. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, my leather butterfly jewelry, which is my theme this whole month. But again, which designs are based on realistic colors, which ones are based on colors I've made up and the reasons why. Um, and just to see if you can tell the difference. So again, in a moment, I'm going to show you, sorry, I get the camera. I'm going to show you some of the butterfly jewelry. Most of this, I will say, all the shapes of the butterflies are based on real shapes. Um, so those are not made up. But again, the coloring I use for them may not be real. For example, this is a real butterfly. This is a real butterfly, so this is nothing I made. This is called the Uranden moth. So now the shape of that, it has like three little tails at the end of the wing. It's a little hard to see that on the black, maybe. But the white is the actual tails. So I have this butterfly, which is the same shape. But again, is that the real colors of one? You know, so things like that. So I'm going to show you some of the other pieces I have here on the table. And again, right now I'm showing you the butterfly hair pieces just because they're larger and they're easier to see. Um, I was a kindergarten teacher for many years. So a lot of these things are based on books and things that I had. I primarily was into the science. Um, I taught kindergarten, so it was very hands-on, very exploratory, so we were into the science thing, like we raised all sorts of butterflies and caterpillars and insects and watch them change through their life cycles and things like that when I was a teacher. And, of course, um, budgets for, you know, especially private um, schools and things where I taught were not large, so all the books that I had were things I personally bought myself. So, of course, when I left, they went with me, and I still have cabinets full of collections of children's books, um, which I'm hoping to share with my grandchildren and things like this. But right now, I'm also using them for a reference for some of the things that I am making, which I will show you in a minute. I've actually taken some pictures like this that I thought it came out pretty cool that I had on something um, earlier. So, again, I'm going to flush around the table. Can you tell which ones of these are realistic and which ones are made-up shapes? So here, I'm going to just turn the camera this way. And I think you can see all the beautiful ones on the table. And so, again, I use books by different authors. I have one here by Jerry Pallotta. This is a butterfly. Um, again, these are books I used when I was teaching. See, now there's the Morpho butterfly, which is, um, again, the color is more of this one, but not quite the right shape. So that's not a realistic book. I have this book on butterflies and moths. The, um, Golden Guide. So, again, that one I use. So, again, the tiger swallow tail is mine colored accurate. Really, you tell me. <laughs> so, anyways, so I have all the different shapes here. And, again, I have this book here, which is, um, again, Jerry Pilata's Butterfly Alphabet Book. Um, so, some of the butterflies here. And you can see that some of these are based very much on what the book has. So, I actually took a picture like that in the picture. It's almost hard to tell which one's the real one and which one's, you know actual barrette so those are based on the real butterflies there um i'm sure most of you recognize the monarch so that of course is based on a real butterfly um so again some very bright colored ones this is called the wizard that's a real butterfly the luna moths i have it in two different styles again so those are based on real colors so again my question to you is um which way you like the um the colors, whether you like the realistic colors, whether you like the fantasy colors. Now, funny, it's funny on some of them, though, because I'll find slightly different information. Like in this one, it has a purple hair streak, I think it is. In, um, it's in one of these books. And um, <clears throat> in another book, it's colored very different. So, you know, I'm taking different things from different books. And again, of course, in the color, like this is called The Great Purple Hair Streak, which is actually in this, which I would think would be the more accurate book. Um, and it's got the teal and the blue in it. it. You know, it's more those colors than it is purple, which I thought was interesting because it is called The Great Purple Hair Streak. So that's what this is based on. Um, so, again, they're all based on the real shapes of butterflies. This is actually a real butterfly. And, again, I have the names of all of them. I'm going to mix them up now if I try to um, say what they are. The Atlas Moth, I know that one. And that's a real color, the Atlas Moth. Um, some of these, this is called uh, Ulysses Butterfly. 
And again, some of the ones now, this one is kind of based on a tiger swallowtail, although the tiger swallowtail, a lot of people are familiar with that, doesn't have all that blue in it. So it's the right shape, but I've added a little bit more blue just to brighten it up. So again, some of them a little bit in between combinations. This is called the cloud wing. I did have a picture of it in those colors, although I don't really know if the real butterfly is. This, this is kind of like a minty green. Kind of hard to see the color in brown. So some of them are just colors that I think, you know, appeal to people like the teal. This obviously is my color. If you know, that's the color of all the clothes I'm wearing today. So that would go perfect in my hair. This is another one that I absolutely love, just because I personally love these colors. Um, but I think that's very stunning together. And again, I think that depending on the color hair you have, you know, like that would make that stand out on my hair. If it was just this one, again, the teal would stand out. The gold would kind of blend in with my my hair itself. So depending, you know on what kind of style you like it all different colors and things so again i again this these live things are not going the way i plan them this was really supposed to be on facebook it was supposed to be at one o'clock but then all of a sudden my camera is saying that my camera does not work on the live anymore um because i don't have the right version of chrome or something i don't know so I'm having issues with the filming, which is typically my case. Um, so I plan all these events. They never go according to plan. Um, my Spotlight Saturday series on Saturday, the power went out in the middle of it. Um, again, this was scheduled at 1, and then nothing would go live. I mean, it was showing the pre preview, but once it went to go live, the screen went blank. So I thought I was all set, but until I tried to film it, I was not. Um, so I apologize for that. So really, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about this because if this camera doesn't work, I'm screwed because this is the only thing I have to film on at the moment. Um, so that's how that goes. So again, I was also trying to put a poll up today on the best time to broadcast. I'll see. I don't know if I'll be able to put that This is on YouTube now. That was on Facebook. I was trying to put a poll of the best time to broadcast these things because I know because people more people are home now that during the morning they may be involved in school with their kids so that's probably not the best time is the evening better the late afternoon midday lunchtime you know I was trying to take a poll so any comment you want to leave would really help um, again that's what helps make a small business like mine grow is um, the sharing um, also um, again I have other series that I do live each week the Maker Monday is always on Mondays Wednesday, have the workshop Wednesday, which then again, I'm going to carry through with what I was talking about today about the coloring. And then I'm going to go through and start showing hand painting um, some of the items. I'm going to work on the earrings now, which of course about the size of the quarter for very, so very intricate shapes. And you know how I go about painting those. So that will be in the workshop Wednesday. And then Spotlight Saturday always highlights some of the products that I have. Um, you know, current things, and sometimes I compare them to all the things that I've had and how it's changed over the years. Um, I also may be studying something called the trunk shows, where if I'm not doing any of my outdoor live events and my craft shows, which is normally where I sell my stuff, how I'm going to be doing these sales at home, which will basically, basically be based out of here, but you'll be able to purchase stuff kind of right from Facebook. So tomorrow I'm going to, I was going to try to have a live event and go over how the details of that work. Again, I'm having glitches with the Facebook thing working at all now because it's saying my ca my camera is not compatible with the live version anymore or something or other. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that because this is the only camera I have. So um, like I said, I believe this is working now. But again, so I may be having to do these now on YouTube. I've had to keep switching back and forth for while I was doing them on Facebook and it didn't work anymore. I switched to YouTube, but I was having trouble with YouTube, switched back to Facebook. Um, I don't know what's going on here so, and I'm not real you know, tech savvy. So I really don't know what to do. Um, if I can't, you know, it looks like it's going to start. The camera shows up. I can see the picture. And then when I click to go live, I have nothing. So I'm not sure what's going on there. So I apologize for that. So these are my intentions. Again, the Maker Monday is always on Mondays. Workshop Wednesday is the live event where I demonstrate things. Spotlight Saturday, highlighting some more of the, the current products. And then, again, I may throw in the trunk shows and, and things like that also to try to increase sales here at home. And the trunk shows will have a theme. They will be different than the theme. So, again, this month I'm talking about butterfly jewelry Last, last month was about guitar straps. As far as the um, trunk show goes, it's not going to have anything to do with the, those lines. It's going to be more themed on 
um, you know, some other aspect. So they're not all the same product. So it will have a variety of products from my collection. Some of the limited edition things, so, you know, some pieces I may only have one or two of, things like that. Um, some, you know, things that I'm no longer going to be making. So they're the last ones I have in stock. So um, things like that. So again, I'm going to try to have a live video a little bit more about the trunk shows tomorrow. Um, and again, I'm hoping to put a poll up here on what time to have them and, and what time people would watch them, what day of the week may be. Um, but I'm not sure how any of this is going to go, seeing these live events are not going the way I want them to. So I apologize for that. And um, I'll just have to see if I can figure out here. Obviously, I'm going to have to play with this ahead of time and see what's going to work and what isn't going to work. Because I can't tell. Um, let me just peek over here because I see something up on my screen and I can't tell if there's comments or not because I can't see that far. Um, no, I guess not. All right. Well, thank you very much for right now. I think that's about... All I have to say, um, again, this is Jan Hibbert from Log Cabin Leather. Today I was talking, again, this whole month is about my leather butterfly jewelry collection and how I cut these very intricate shapes I've talked about and things like that and a new piece of equipment that I've gotten that is really up to my game, which allows me to cut these very precisely with the detail um, and things like that, which I could not do otherwise. So I've talked about that earlier this month. So if you want to catch some of my other videos, you can check that out. Um, so again, this week is more about now the coloring of the projects. Um, next week will be more about how the finishing touches and putting them together, making the earrings as opposed to the, the barrettes, how the um, clasps are made so they're not going to come off, things like that. So more um, on that line. And again, these videos are not intended for a how-to to teach somebody how to make that it's to teach to get you to understand what goes involved in making the products again most of my things are based on I'm a, i like realistic things i love nature i love animals that's why as a teacher the science thing was always what i taught um because i think kids need to learn be in tune with their environment learn to take care of their environment um that's also my connections to the um mount kiosage indian museum where i do work as a tour guide when we are opened and things like that, trying to connect people to the earth and how we need to take care of it to support ourselves and things like that. So those are all causes that are important to me um, because if we don't take care of the earth, it's not going to take care of us. So those, you know, and again, this type of product um, is made out of eco-friendly leather. It is all biodegradable. This is called vegetable tanned leather, and that probably doesn't mean most something to most of you, but it's tanned with vegetables. Basically, oak, acorns, can have a lot of tannin. That is a process that has been used for thousands of years, um, soaking the hides in the oak and letting it soak, tans the hide, gives it a new, different properties, which can you can carve it and things like that. So any leather that has a design on it, it is molded, you know, like again, these are, you know, formed shape-wise. Um, the edges are curled and things like that. You couldn't mold it if it wasn't this type of leather. But it's biodegradable because it's not tanned with chemicals. It does not have any salts or anything like that in it. It's tanned with bark um, and acorns and natural products like that. So it is eco-friendly, biodegradable. Um, so for anybody who's, you know, environmentally conscious, this is a great product as far as that goes. Um, and pretty much that's what I'm going to talk about today. So again, later this week, I'll talk about the coloring and um, try to talk maybe more about having what's called a trunk show where you can actually purchase things kind of directly through my website, You get, uh, right directly through the Facebook. Well, I was going to plan it on Facebook, so I'm not sure. You could right then make a comment if you wanted to purchase something, and then I would send you an invoice. And again, I'll have to figure out because if I can't do it on Facebook, I'm not sure if I can do something like that here on YouTube or how that will work. Um, the technology end of this is, you know, it's a little bit advanced for me. So I'll be honest about that. Um, again, thank you very much. This is Jan Hibbard from Log Cabin Leather. This is another session of my Maker Monday series. And as usual, it didn't go off like it was planned. It was planned for one o'clock today on Facebook. And that did not work. Um, just a story of my life. So thank you very much for anybody who watches. I'm sure anybody who's watching and probably is catching it on a replay because, um, you didn't know when and where I was doing this. So thank you very much for joining me. Stay safe, everybody. Um, 
Hope you'll uh, watch some more of my stuff um, in the future. I have to see where I'm trying to click to end this because <laughs> I can't see that far. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Stay safe. Bye for now. Thank you.